time for another edition of the Romania Show. Yeah, glad you guys are all here. You guys glad to be here? All right, good. Something actually, uh, before I forget, something really cool happened to me today. I was walking down the street, and a guy comes up to me and goes, Hey, the Romania Show. So, yeah, sweet. You know who you are. And thanks for watching. And I wasn't expecting someone to come do that quite as quickly as they did. Uh, be quite honest with you, I expected about six months before the show takes off, and it's been on there about two weeks. And hey, you're watching the show. Awesome! Tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your neighbors, tell your relatives. Uh, this is the coolest show in Romania and the English language. And as you can see, I'm a little bit dark today uh, here in the studios. The sun. I should mention. <laughs> I should tell you how this thing is going. Eventually, we're going to get this all worked out. So. You know, remain just just be a little patient here. But uh, I have some lights. You can't really see them because if I move them, they'll screw up the picture. But uh, I don't have a, a proper TV studio. It's completely indoors and it's all lit up by artificial lights. I don't have enough lighting to do that. Plus, I don't really have a way to block out the sun. So part of the lighting that is being used comes from the sun. Well, the sun's kind of going back and forth between clouds and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of um, screwing things up. You might also hear a dog in the background. Wow, that's my neighbor's dog. You know, hey, what can you do? The dog's... Can you hear it? You know, I can see a little bit. Okay, well, the dogs are going nuts. God only knows why. And this is Romania. So, awesome. Just want to let you know, also, another piece of news is that tomorrow, which is Thursday, uh, June 14th, we will not be broadcasting. I have some other things I have to do, and there's just no way to get a show in. We will be back on Friday, so stay tuned for that. Uh, normal time, as always, 7 p.m. in Romania and all the other times uh, around the world, depending on where you're watching this from. Um, you might be wondering, you know, why am I wearing a black uh, long sleeve jacket or shirt or whatever this is? It's because, quite frankly, uh, I'm tired. I am taking uh, the day off on Friday, and my ordinary schedule could be described as punishing, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to cram about five days worth of work into four days this week, so I am beat. I'm tired. I got in the door uh, of the Romania studio, the Romania show studios, maybe about 15, 20 minutes ago, and I haven't even had time to take a shower. So that just lets you know what's going on with me. So, awesome. Yesterday, I saw the coolest thing that I've seen in a long time in Romania. Now, I mentioned in the show that the parliament, yesterday I mentioned that the parliament had passed a decision that said Victor Ponta was going to go to the European Council meeting on the 28th of June, there this month. And that's all I really said about it because I didn't really have time to do research on it. Well, yesterday, uh, the president, Trajan Basesco, remember, Ponta, Red Team, uh, using my little shorthand version, uh, Ponta, Red Team, Basescu, we'll say Orange Team, they are uh, opposing politicians, they don't like each other and their associated uh, political moves are, you know, they're like Republicans and Democrats or Tories and Labour and you know, they're, they're, they don't get along. Well, it was the elections, as you know, up until Sunday, and Ponta has been Prime Minister about a week and a, a month and a week, so he's pretty much been the Prime Minister during the election season, and basesco has been kind of real quiet, the President, he's been you kind of not really get involved in not really releasing any statements to the press, not really uh, showing up in public, not been having his photograph taken. He's been kind of, you know, on the, on the down low. He's still doing his job, but been staying real low. Part of it, of course, is because, uh, you know, there's some rules about how he can be involved with the local elections. Well, elections are over. And as I mentioned yesterday, the parliament passed this decision, said Ponta's going to the European Council. Well, Basescu, Maju, Malu, I saw him on TV. I mean, just imagine the heavy artillery guns just fired up. Kablam, kablam, kablam. He was like, oh, no. Oh, sir, you are incorrect, sir. And he had a, a little uh, live speech. It was carried on all the news channels. And it was in Romanian, of course. And, and he was like, look, dude, you're... And this is what he basically said. He goes, you're an idiot. Not only does the... Uh, the European Union uh, agreement that Romania signed say that the president of Romania is going to go to these meetings because the X reason why one two three four five six seven eight nine blah blah blah, but 
you might remember that that treaty was only ratified a couple years ago, and guess who participated in writing it? I did! So I know what I'm talking about. And you're wrong because of this, you're wrong because of that, you're wrong because of this, blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting there going, well, I'm freaking convinced that guy sounds like, I mean, he know, he wasn't just saying that like, oh, I got my boy to do some research. He's like, dude, I wrote this damn thing, okay? You have no idea what you're doing. Now, upon further analysis, it turns out the parliament of Romania, controlled by Victor Ponte at the moment and the Red and Yellow Team Alliance, um, they have several options of what they can do in terms of, uh, you know, their powers. One power is they pass a new law. That's not what they did yesterday. Another power that they have is called the Hotorure in Romanian, which means like uh, officially binding decision. And the third thing that they can do is just make what's called a declaration. And they can say something like, uh, uh, ice cream is delicious and we hereby declare ice cream is delicious. Well, they can do that all day long. The United States Congress does it all the time. They go, today is uh, so-and-so jelly bean day. Doesn't make anything legally different, any legal difference, but so what they did yesterday wasn't any legally binding decision. It wasn't either a law nor was it an official um, agreement as, or a decision as they call it. So essentially they were just saying like, we just basically declare that Victor Font is going to be going to this meeting. So it doesn't have any legal weight. And of course, but says, but yeah, it doesn't have any legal weight. Bam, you're fools. Blah, 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 blah. In fact, uh, uh, he announced yesterday that there was going to be a press conference tomorrow, which is now today at 6 p.m., where he's going to have him and three or four of these super legal dudes, and they're all going to lay it out in excruciating detail exactly why he's correct. Uh, I didn't have a chance to watch that because, like I said, I just got home. So, all that's fine. Now, I'm watching a new show, and uh, after, you know, Basescu just... I mean, he had the Constitution of Romania in his, in his hand, and then he had the, the relevant passages from the treaty. He was like, uh, excuse me while I put my glasses on and take your ass to school. Right? Uh, article, blah, blah, blah. You're busted. Article, this, blah, blah, blah. Article, I mean, I mean, my cat was looking at me going, well, I'm fucking convinced. I mean, I think, you know, he's totally right. So, um, I'm watching this new show. And on the new show, there's several people. There's a couple politicians. One of them is from the Red Team. He's this old dude named Grebla. Now, he's kind of an old dude, and uh, I apologize for the lighting being crazy that I mentioned, you know, we've got some little issues going on here, but this Grebla guy, uh, he's a little old, but he's not stupid, he, he's like an old, I'm an old, large, oh my goodness, look at that, it's getting psychedelic around here with this crazy stuff. He's like, I'm an old lawyer, and I'm on, he's a senator in Romania, a current senator, and he said, I'm on the judicial committee, and it just so happens I'm an expert and all of these treaties and European law and all this other crap. And he was taking everybody else on the show to school saying, oh, he's got a real deep frog with like, I declare blah, 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 is correct. Well, who calls up the show? Like 10 minutes after he gets off the air with his, you know, nationwide broadcast about this subject, ring, ring, calls up the new show. And he goes, hey, how you doing? They're like, oh, Mr. President, uh, you know, come on the show. How's it going? And he goes, uh, Mr. Grambler, I, I, I doesn't talk like this at all, but I'm just going to use a funny voice. He goes, Mr. Grambler, sir, I, I, I hope you don't mind if I address some of the things that you've been saying, because I've been watching. So basically, he gets off the stage. He's at the Kotorchim Palace, which is kind of like the Romanian White House. Boom, he goes into some room. Ting, turns on the TV, he's watching this Grambler guy kind of you know, take apart his little argument there. And he starts going... You're wrong because of this, you're wrong because of that, you're wrong because of this. And you should have seen this guy. I, I wish I had... There's something I've been wanting to do, which I don't have the technology. I found a store that sells it for a couple hundred dollars or a couple hundred euros, and I might just buy it because I wish I had recorded that segment because that guy grabbed that. First, he's like, I'm so pompous and smug and confident. And then Basescu was like, uh, blah, 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 blah. And, and his face was like, oh, shit. Because, you know, they're wrong, you know, and... and you know, he, of course he didn't admit it, but, you know, bow, bow, bow. so that was freaking cool to watch. And, I mean, Basisco, I gotta be honest with you, I don't all, really like all of his policies. I certainly don't like the fact that he's constantly going to the American Embassy and saying, Mr. Ambassador, you're the best. Well, how can I serve you, sir? I mean, he's always wanting more FBI, FBI agents in Romania. Why do we need FBI agents? American FBI agents, I don't have any freaking idea. Uh... Last I looked, Al-Qaeda wasn't hiding around the corner, but, you know, but 
don't mistake Vasescu for being stupid because that guy is freaking tough and he's smart and uh, you know this guy he knows what he's talking about and he's the only politician ever made that I've seen of any maybe there's a few local politicians but in terms of like national stage uh, prime time politicians he's the only one who acts like a dignified leader and I think that's why people support him I mean he was impressed with me last night he didn't just go Hey, you suck, blah, 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 like most politicians do. I start yelling. He's like, oh, excuse me, sir, I just happened to, like Columbo. You ever watch Columbo, the old uh, detective series? Like, oh, just one more thing, sir. And then, bam, your case is totally screwed up. So, awesome. That was, I, I was literally like on the, uh, on the sofa watching this going, yeah, yeah, just because he was putting those pompous bastards right down in their place. But, whew, let's not get too carried away. I've already spent about 10 minutes talking about that. If you look at the top of the screen, or at the top of the screen, you will see I put my contact information up there. If you want to join the show live, uh, you can either use Skype, as you can see the information right there, or use Twitter and a hashtag, and the software does this automatically, so I am not in control of this. And what you see is what you get. So if you want to join the, join the circus, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, I also have my email and a few other things on there in case you want to... Um, Write me something. Somebody actually did write me something, but I'm going to get to that uh, on Friday because I don't have it ready right here. But today is the 22nd anniversary of what they call the Miner, uh, Miner, Mineriada in Romania, which kind of means like the, the miner, of, as in coal miners. Because 22 years ago today, Iliescu, who is still alive and is the honorary president of the Red Team, he used to be the president of the country for eight years, right after the revolution, 22 years ago today is when he sent in the miners, the coal miners, to go beat up the protesters, including killing a few people in Bucharest. Never apologized for it, never even been officially found guilty of it, only the European Court of Human Rights has ever declared that Romanian government, uh, under his leadership, is responsible for that. Uh, Romanian authorities have never done Jack squat to this guy. And remember, last it's already been talked about on my show. Last week, he was like, oh, Paul, this is my, Paul, this is my boy. Right, team forever. So, today, congratulations, sir. Uh, you know, 22 years since you sent innocent people to their death because you're no communist bastard. So, thanks for that. Yippee! Oh, man, I'm getting a little too bummed out thinking about that. Timmy, you going to fix this lighting here? <laughs> no, no, he's not really charged to the lighting, but... We're going to have to get somebody in charge of that. Uh, kids, you having fun today? You want some ice? What, he, what? What do you mean you're not having fun? I told you, I want to hear some cheering, because if you do some cheering, you get ice cream. Okay? Is that cool? All right. Finally, the kids are on board. Woof. Victor Ponta, not resting on his laurels. Um, God, this guy is like, he's like, he had a secret plan in his briefcase. And as soon as he got into power, he's like, we gotta do all this stuff as fast as we can before we lose power again. You might remember last couple of weeks, first the vice president or the vice, the second director, assistant director of the energy regulatory agency here in Romania was fired for saying that, you know, energy prices might go up 5%. And then the president or the director was fired because he just didn't like his face. And today, the parliament, under the red team and Mr. Ponta, decided to put direct control of the energy regulatory agency under parliamentary control. It used to be sort of a, I guess you could call it a quasi-independent state agency, and now it's going to be under direct parliamentary control, which of course means the red team has you know, deeper grips on this. And part of it is just that they had more power, as literally. <laughs> This is kind of a pun, but also it's because they want to start deregulating the energy market. Now, if you're one of these like, oh, the free market is great and everything's fine, and then you're like, yippee, yeah, it's awesome, they're going to deregulate, which means the market will take care of itself and all this other crap. Personally, I live in Romania, and what it's really going to mean is that the prices are going to go through the roof, because energy is a little bit different than saying, selling ice cream. Uh, you know, ice cream, it's fairly easy to have some competitors. Energy, what am I supposed to do? I don't like the electricity I'm getting on my, on my, on my streets. So I go, hey, uh, who am I going to call up to get some more different energy? 
No, they, there's only one energy company in town. I don't know about every city in Romania, but there's only one around right here. And they already jacked up the rates, and now they're going to jack them up some more. And what are you going to do? Because, oh, it's free market. What can you do? Well, you know, looks like some people are going to be wearing some mighty heavy sweaters this year, or it's going to be just like they do in, you know, Romania. It's kind of cool. They're like, I don't care. I bring my old father's, you know, wood-fired stove. There's going to be a lot of wood-fired stoves this, this winter. Things don't get out of control. Thing in under control, but... What can you do? They're doing the sneaky stuff when nobody's watching. Speaking of which, uh, they also took direct parliamentary control today of the ICR, which is uh, an acronym that stands for the Romanian Cultural Institute. It's, it's not the most powerful uh, arm of the government, but it's yet another thing that's been uh, taken away from its uh, independent state and put under direct control of the parliament. And of course, Ponta put in his own dude as a director, I mean, you know, if, if you're a friend of Ponta's right now, you're like, chitta ching, because you're just waiting for the phone to ring, like, hey dude, uh, I got a job for you, what is it? Oh, director, I don't know what the hell it is. How much does it pay, boss? Oh, billion lay a month? Oh, okay, I'll do it, yeah, no problem. So that's pretty much what's going on, including the fact that I didn't get a chance to mention this yesterday, but the transport, Minister of Transportation, all the department chiefs under them, including the railroad passenger section, the uh, railroad freight section, and Tarom, which is the national airlines, all of them got new directors yesterday. Or they're going to have new directors really soon because he whoosh, hacked everybody and he's pointing his own dudes. So they're just kind of, you know, ching, 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 putting all their dudes right in power. And uh, that's great for them, but I can't say it's all that great for the rest of the country. So. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, Romania yesterday. He barely. I mean, it's like, does anybody even know this is going on? It's almost like a, I'm getting secret communications from outer space. But Romania got a billion dollars or euros, excuse me, actually more than a billion dollars, 1.3 million billion billion, just like Carl Sagan, billions and billions. Got an extra billion euros yesterday from the World Bank. You know, you start. Given a billion here and a billion here, pretty soon it starts adding up to serious money. Now, of course, it's not a gift. It's not like uh, my friend goes, hey, man, here's five lay. Okay, thanks for the gift. No, this is you got to be paid back. So I'm going to have to find some time here in the near future and, you know, add up how much money does Romania owe to all these international organizations like the World Bank and the IMF and who knows who else, EBRD, the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development. And, you know, I keep track of almost everything that goes on in Romania. I have a, I'll get into that another time, how I do that. But, you know, they're selling, I almost call them treasury bonds. They're Romanian government bonds. And they're sending like hundreds of millions of euros a week of these things. Now, these are a little bit different than a loan because Romania essentially is getting other people to loan them money. And, yeah, a private person can buy them. It doesn't have to necessarily be... Uh, you know, bank, although of course usually it's large financial institutions of one sort or another, but they're selling millions, and they're selling them in dollars too, which is a little weird, American dollars, you know, millions of dollars worth of government bonds, and they're these real short term, like, you know, one year, 5% interest, but they're just churning these things out, which means they're basically getting, uh, the basic, if you don't understand uh, sovereign bonds, I guess that's how you'd call them in a neutral way, is basically the government says, here's a piece of paper. That's all it is. It's not even money. It's just a piece of paper. It says, you buy this for X price. You know, it's actually denominated by just, you know, the same as the currency. So, lei in Romania. And you come back to, you don't get anything. You just get a piece of paper. And then if you come back to us in a year, whatever it says on the piece of paper, we'll give you that plus a very specific amount of interest. In this particular case, a little bit over 5%. So, you know, it's... It's a way of raising money in the short term without a lot of paperwork and a lot of, you know, IMF and World Bank, they always want, you know, all these agreements and you got to do what they say. And I told you to cut salaries, boy. You know, these sovereign bonds, you don't have to do anything. But it's like, man, how many sovereign bonds can this country be paying back? Not to mention, you know, who's buying these things? I mean, 5% with the way the low's been going down, the low is, the low is down 10% against the euro. So if you had one that you bought last year, and you're a country that uses euros, 
and you converted to lay, bought the lay, and then you know a year later you get five percent extra. So you go, so if you bought say a hundred lay, and you got five percent, uh, and you're looking for your hundred and five lay, which is fine, except that the lay is down, the lay was down ten percent against the euro. So by the time you convert back to euros or dollars, it's down against the dollar. Too, you, you lost money, but people. are I don't know who. I mean, this is the kind of thing you gotta do some research. I wish there were some real journalists out there that could, you know, dig through this. Who is buying these things? Because it doesn't seem like a very good idea. But anyway, got an extra billion. And that's just, you know, they always say, oh, just in case. Just in case of what? I mean, at some point, you know, there's how many people live in Romania? Let's do the math. Less than 20 million. So if you add up all the billions that the people have to pay back, you know, it's quite a lot, and it's quite a lot per person, and at this point, I, be I believe, I did the calculations a while ago, but something like 5,000 euros a person, it was all paid back today, and, you know, that's a lot of money, especially, I know people who don't got five lay in their pocket, so, who knows, but, what else did I want to talk about? Okay, I got a couple minutes, so, uh, you know, folks, one of the reasons why I'm doing the show, we're going to branch out into some other stuff, and, you know, sorry about the weird green thing, and the light's just going nuts here. <sighs> is that there's so much uh, propaganda and disinformation. I mean, yesterday in Romanian language, on one channel, I'm watching Basescu, you know, trounce Griblo, you know, show him that he's wrong. But on the other channel, Antenna 3, which is uh, Antenna 3 in English, you know, uh, Mircea Vade, who has a show called In Grupo Se, which the show is vaguely based upon, he's sitting there and he's just spreading out these lies. And you have to really know who owns each of these channels and who they are aligned with politically or who they're connected with, you know, who the, who the mafia boss is that runs the dang thing. And then it explains the coverage. And it's not very transparent. I, in Romania, there's fewer channels, so um, if you know what you've done, it's not super hard to figure out what's going on. But like a lot of people, you know, even in Romania, even, you know, ProTV, I'm actually a pretty big fan of theirs. I think they actually do a pretty good news uh, a lot of times. They actually do some investigative reporting. And, of course, they featured me last year, which is cool. But I've been watching them for a long time. And they came in Romania right after the revolution, set up a whole series of, um, I guess, uh, antennas or dishes. And even people who don't have cable can usually pick up their signal. When I first moved to Romania, I didn't have cable or, or satellite or anything. And... So literally, the only channel I could pick up with just a regular old antenna was ProTV. But a lot of people in Romania don't know this, even though it's not a secret, but it's actually owned and still operated by controlling interest by an American, American company. So, you know, that has an influence on the way they do things. Because somewhere in Romania, there's a guy who has to call up an American guy and say, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. So... When it comes to English language coverage of Romania, uh, you also have to be careful. And, and you don't know who exactly is uh, paying for the articles that you read. And I noticed today, I, I found an article and I realized it was from the Southeast European Times. Now, am I saying everything in that newspaper is crap? No. Uh, a lot of times they report very factual and normal things. but. If you don't know this, you don't realize it, but they're owned and financed by the Pentagon. The United States the military pays for this newspaper. They pay for a lot of newspapers around the world. This one in particular covers Romania, not just Romania, Southeastern Europe, you know, Hungary and uh, I guess former Yugoslavia and places like that. But they, they cover Romanian news and... Like I said, a lot of times they're very factual, and it's a very uh, ordinary article. It could be about, uh, I don't know, um, the price of gasoline or something. You know, the facts are the facts. But it's owned and financed by the American military. Now, why would the American military finance it and uh, publish it if it didn't have at least some benefit to itself? So I'll leave you with that. I'm not going to you know, go into too much conspiracy stuff, but... That's not a conspiracy, that's a fact. You can look it up yourself. There's plenty of proof of it, and they don't really deny it. They just also don't advertise it. So, one of the things I'm really interested in doing uh, on this show, besides, I mean, we're having fun too, okay? Let's, you know, let's not get too serious here, but 
it's important to understand where these, you know, propaganda is coming from. I mean, you got a team today which is, you know, busted on uh, Orange Team because they're owned by uh, some people that are closely allied with the Red Team. So that's influencing that, and he's ha 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 ha, and some of what he was saying was right. So it's uh, the best lies are, are mixed with a whole lot of truth. You gotta always keep that in mind. My mission here, so to speak, is to try to distill everything that's going on. And we're gonna get to other stuff. It's not gonna be all this super serious stuff. I'm getting a little depressed myself thinking about this, but. You know, we're gonna, like I said, Friday, I'm just super tired, folks. Okay, Friday, we're getting the camera, we're ordering the camera, and we'll start getting some on the street stuff going on, and we'll make some, some clips and all this other stuff. We'll have more fun. Plus, um, you know, as the budget gets good, we'll get the lighting fixed. But, finish off on one totally odd thing that I came across today in the news, and was that uh, Tulcea, which is uh, in southeastern Romania, where there's the Danube Delta, in uh, a big, you know, sort of wetland, marshland area, very beautiful, a lot of people uh, go there as tourists, they have millions of birds flock there and all sorts of stuff. Well, they just canceled, or uh, they made it basically, it used to be you had to pay money, to, like you do in America. You pay money, you go to the local government, and they give you a permit to go fishing. And there's certain rules you gotta follow, you know, what kind of fish you can fish, and you know, what time of year and stuff. Well, you still have to go get the little license or whatever, but now it's free. They cancel all the fees for fishing. And, you know, that's a little strange. And so I, I read into it a little bit more, and they said, oh, because we want to encourage more people to go fishing. Now, Personally, uh, I'm actually a vegetarian. Shh, don't tell anyone, but uh, I used to go fishing. I used to go fishing with my grandfather. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, a lot of people will tell you, especially, you know, family fishing. It's sitting on the side of the bank of the river, and it's mostly about just chilling, and you watch the water go by. It's not really about, like, <laughs> gotta catch more fish, gotta catch more fish. But I'm wondering. Yeah, this is Romania. You know, some people want to go fishing with their grandson or granddaughter. Awesome, you know, now it doesn't cost you money to get the little permit to go do it. And that's cool. I'm 100% with that. But, you know, I gotta wonder if, number one, that's not gonna lead to some problems in terms of somebody in Romania is gonna get a crazy idea that now they can just go fishing as much as they want to and, you know, overfish somehow. These are kind of small creeks and tributaries for the most part. It's not like you can get a big boat in there, but. Or, you know, is this kind of a sign of the times or things getting kind of bad that, you know, maybe people are kind of going to the fishing because they need to, like, actually do it for food. I'm not really not quite sure, but um, I've never been to Tulce. It's one of the places I need to go visit. I, I know a few people who live there, and they say it's really nice and beautiful and everything else. But if you live in Tulce and you're watching the show, well, grab your fishing pole because now you can be sitting on the dock of the bay. Watching no cares go away or whatever. I forget the whole thing, but um, in any event, folks, I think that's gonna have to be the show. I am like falling asleep even as I'm talking. So uh, remember, we will be off tomorrow, and that means that you will not see me around. So don't cry, okay? Because I know that makes people sad sometimes. And now we're gonna have a little upbeat music. Yeah. yeah, have a super good day.